Hi, I'm Philip Farber with Benson Systems. I'm the manager of the electronics restoration division of our company. Here at Benson, when your business has a flood or fire, we send a crew out and take those electronics and then we bring them back here and we do the restoring and the cleaning of those electronics. Let me show you around. Once we have returned from picking up the electronics, we bring them back to our electronics cleaning room. First, they come here in this area. What we do here is we categorize and inventory every item that we have received from you and send it over to the insurance company. Then we bring it over to the assembly line where we start the cleaning process. Once we bring the electronics over here, we take them apart and put them in these containers getting ready for cleaning. The electronics spray cabinet allows us to do many things. It allows us to put a cleaning solution on the product so we could start the immediate removal of the soot as well as use a spray gun that will allow us to get in all the nooks and crannies and remove all the excess dirt. Let me show you how it works. We have multiple solutions that get the chemical from this bottom part right here, which allows us to either use a, a rust removal process or a smoke removal process depending on the job. We first start out by taking it to the rinse solution which is uh, deionized water with a chemical solution depending on what type of job we're processing. We, we use a, a back and forth spray motion that allows us to remove the majority of the soot prior to going into the ultrasonic machine. Let me show you how that works. The ultrasonic machine uses high frequency sound waves to remove the excess soot and dirt that we normally can't get to with hand cleaning. Let me show you how that works. Once the process has been finished, we remove the item and take it over to the wash station where we can remove the excess chemicals that we use for cleaning. Let me show you how that works. Here we have both city water and deionized water. We use the city water first because we like to use the minerals in order to wash off some of the soap. Then we go over to the deionized water that removes all the excess minerals off the piece of equipment prior to putting in the dryer tunnel. After we remove the excess soap and minerals from the ultrasonic machine, we head over to the drying tunnel. The drying tunnel is our pre-dry. We set the drying tunnel to 120 degrees that allows us to rapidly remove the excess water from the device. We leave the item in there for about 10 minutes to do a pre-dry. Now that the drying is complete, we need to remove it so we can take it over to the drying chamber for our long-term drying. The drying chamber in the drying room allows us to do a more thorough drying so the electronics can be completely dry prior for us turning on and testing. Here is our drying room where we put the larger item. In the drying chamber, we put the smaller items. For this particular item, we're going to go ahead and use the drying chamber. The drying chamber works just like a convection oven that you have at home. It uses forced air and heat to dry it more rapidly. The drying room allows us to dry larger items that cannot fit in the drying chamber. We use forced heat coming from our above heater that will rapidly heat this room up to 120 degrees and then let, we let it sit overnight. This is our electronic test bench. This is where we test electronics after they've been properly dried out. Here we turn things on and we test them and make sure they properly work just like they were prior to the loss. I would like to thank you for watching this video. However, nothing compares to seeing this equipment firsthand. I would like to invite you to come down so I could personally show you how this equipment works.